welcome to Forge from Iron. And as I always ask you guys to do, please don't forget to like, comment on and share the stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. As always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. You are here for the next installment of our ongoing series of Mount Matty Rushmore. Just to give you guys who might not be familiar with the concept, allow me to fill you in. We get a guest in the hot seat in as who is obviously a West Ham fan. And we ask that we donate to them out of the goodness of our heart, a mountain called Ra Mount Rushmore. But instead of them having the heads of the four U S presidents carved into it, this is a blank canvas and they can put on the heads of four West Ham players that they have seen during their time following the club. Now they could go route one and go the very best of the best. They could, however, take a slight detour and they might pick cult heroes, for example. They might choose academy graduates. Bad boys could be a genre they might want to tackle. They might just include people because they like them as people. It could be any combination of these or something completely different. It is their mountain. They can decorate it as they see fit. And in the hot seat today, I am very pleased to say we have PDC match referee, Mr. Russ Bray. How are you, sir? Yeah, great. Thanks, Rob. I'm uh, looking forward to this, actually. Good, good. Likewise, my friend. Likewise. Um, just before we get started on it, Russ, um, I'd be very interested. I, I think I probably know the story because I saw your My Hammers 11, but there might be people watching that don't quite realise um, that you you are obviously a West Ham fan. Um, how yeah. far back does your association with the club go and how did it all come about? I went to my first match uh, when I was seven, which mm -hmm. was uh, 1964. Um, that was at Upton Park, obviously. Yep. And um, my dad took me up there. It was cold. And my mum made me wear my pyjama bottoms under my trousers. Yeah. <laughs> I got bought a scarf, bobble hat, rattle, all that sort of caper. And um, it, it, as I say, to go back that far and to go up there and watch it, they played Spurs on that particular day. It was a two-all okay. draw. Two-all draw. My dad turned around and said, me, he said, you'll never see a better game. It's all Upton Park, it was quite funny because when I walked up the steps and looked at the pitch, yeah. Um, as, as much as I mean, seven years of age. As much as you're in awe of what you're seeing, mm. um, I couldn't believe how brown it was. Because <laughs> <Right? laughs> it was just mud. It yep. was just mud. Not and, like today. Uh, no, no, nothing like today. But that that's that was my very first. That was 1964 when I first went up there. Yeah. Fabulous. And, and you've seen obviously a lot of people come through the door, go out the door, Many, change, well, change of ground. I mean, there's lots of stuff absolutely. that's happened in that. Time. Well, a mate of mine, a mate of mine uh, in the day, I played for his dad's team, and mm -hmm. we played in the same school team in the same class with Jeff Pike. So wow, yeah, 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 yeah because we lived in in South Ockenden, in uh, just down from like Upminster Greys that mm. way, and um, I played for Jeff's dad or Jeff's dad run a football team, obviously with Jeff in it. Yep. And uh, I used to play for them. I used to play for them every Saturday. And obviously we played in the school team together and that, yeah. Good player he was. Very good so player. You played with, with one of West Ham's very few FA Cup winning Cup heroes. winners, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. No, 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 no. No, good. No, well, really. It's. Uh, I always like to try and find out people's backstory. It's always an interesting, uh, interesting thing to have out there. Um, Russ. Okay, so we've got four heads that you're going to carve into this side of the mountain. You've you've gone out. You've done your YouTube tutorial on on stone masonry. I'm at the foot of the ladder. You're going up there with your your hammer and your chisel, and you're going to beaver away fervishly. So um, what's the first name of uh, the player that you're going to carve into the side of this mountain, please? Well, to me, it, to me, it was um, one of the greatest halfbacks ever. He'd have been Brazilian. He, they, they would have just waved on as Bobby Moore. Legend. Definitely. Definitely. Legend of the club. Definitely Bobby Moore, absolutely. Someone I was not fortunate enough to, to witness. My, my father seen him play many, many times. <laughs> but um, what, what, was, what was your memories of uh, just you know how great Bobby Moore was for the people that didn't see him what, what was your I'll tell you what and it's funny but true um, I, I, I mentioned the pitch there that, that was you know full of mud and God knows what else. Bobby Moore seemed to come off the pitch as clean as he went on it um, and having played a blinder his timing his tackling and his distribution was just uh, was just sensational he was just absolutely fantastic absolutely fantastic and um the way he came across as well, you know, when you see his interviews, I mean, obviously England captain, but when you see his interviews and things like that, he was just, 
such a nice person. You know what I mean? That's how he always came across. Unfortunately, I never actually physically met him live, which I wish I could have done. Um, but, you know, just, just, I, I, he, he, to me, epitomises West Ham United, how, how the club is and, and the type of person that he was. Yeah, I, I mean, you say about the coming off the pitch, you know, the, the mud baths that they were back then, <laughs> and he was he was immaculate. I mean, I've heard stories yeah. about Bobby Moore. I, we, I'm, I'm very fortunate enough. I interviewed Tony Carr a couple of weeks back, and he right. told about Bobby Moore uh, because he he was obviously very close to Bobby, and he said yeah. that he absolutely immaculate like that in pretty much every facet of his life. You know, he would have yeah. his kit out laid out on the bed you know military fashion if you will and it was yep. if everything was so precise and meticulous and oh, you could believe that because just yeah. how he was you know i mean yeah, yeah exactly that you know look at him when he's being carried at uh, the um uh when we won the world cup you know there he is being carried and he just everything was spot on wasn't it, it wasn't yeah. even dirty you know it's, it's, it's amazing Mate. And 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 one of the the lasting images I've got as as he goes up the steps of at Wembley, and he's just about to receive the the Jules Rimet trophy from the Queen. Yeah, and that's the first thing that he was he was thinking of doing. I can't shake her hand with those lovely white gloves. I've got muddy ha you know. Muddy I've heads. got to clean yeah. them. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was you know up. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Peter Morris is the man. Yeah, it's and it, and it was one. It's funny because sort of like everybody that I've spoken to that was lucky enough to see the great Bobby Moore play. You know, was he the best header of a ball? No. Was he the quickest? No. Was he the strongest? No. But it was his reading of the game. It was he knew where the ball was going to be. He knew where the player was going to be like five, ten seconds before they actually right. were there. It was his reading of the game. His anticipation was second to none. His timing, his timing on a tackle was amazing. He's, once he's got the ball, his distribution then was, you know, to foot. And it was yeah. for someone's foot, you know what I mean? And it was every time. He very rarely, very rarely made a mistake on that. Um, I'll tell you who's, who's in a similar line, I think, is Declan Rice now, currently. Declan, Declan gets the ball. His distribution of the ball is terrific. He really is, um, you know, and, you know, I liken it. I, I, I can't say he's as good as Bobby Moore because it's yep. a completely different era of football. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I liken that to, you know, the style of Bobby Moore. Good player, good player, good Yeah, well, I, I think that's that's a great compliment to pay to Declan Rice. That, that, that he, there's even that comparison that Absolutely. you can you can make, as you say, it's very very difficult to compare eras yeah. and, and all the rest football. of it. But yeah. you know, to, to say that he's of that sort of cut from that cloth, if you will, it's it's a yeah. high testament to, to the quality of uh, of Bobby Moore and to Declan Rice. It's a great compliment. Exactly. So exactly. that's the first head that you've carved out, Russ. I've got to yeah. say that that that. Stone Masonry Guide for Dummies book that you bought from <laughs> WH Smith's earlier. It's it's really reaped dividends because I'm looking at this, mate, and it looks absolutely stunning. And your Gorgeous. hands are in bits, but you got to go back up that ladder, mate, because you've got three more left to do. So um, who's the second one on the list? Well, I, I, you probably see a fame here, but it's got to be Jeff first. It's got to be Hurst. You know, he's, um, and I, he's a guy that I've been fortunate enough to meet um, on quite a few occasions, actually. And, um, you know, again, it was um, that combination of, you know, more Hurst and Pete as well. We know where we're going with this. Um, those guys that, uh, well, you can't say one is the World Cup, but they were so instrumental in everything that was happening in that World Cup in 66. Um, and for West Ham in general, you know, I mean, they, they, they were great, great people to have representing your football club on the pitch and off it. You know, it's uh, uh, and and Jeff first. Even now, when you see Jeff first now, again another immaculate footballer. Yeah. Um, he, he he, you know, personifies West Ham. I think. I really yeah, do. and and obviously he's he's more well known around the world. I would guess for for his exploits in the final of '66, where he got the hat trick, uh, which yeah. which no one had done before, and no one has well, done since, since in the World exactly. Cup final. You know, exactly. so he stands alone. In, in footballing history, he's now a knight of the realm, 80 yeah. years of age, and he's, you know, he still, he still, still looks, looks as, so good. He I looks know. as fit as a fiddle, doesn't I he? I know, it's incredible, incredible. You know, he does, he's just, he's just fantastic. 
Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely, and a, and a great ambassador for for the, the English game for for West Ham United. Um, just looking here, he, um, as far as his stats at West Ham were concerned, he played five hundred matches in all competitions and got two hundred and forty two goals. So just short of two. a goal every other game. Every other game, brilliant. <laughs> you'd want that. You'd want that off his strikers, wouldn't you? Today, Definitely. you'd want that. Definitely. One hundred. Not going to score this week, but you will next. You know, it's it's it's, it's yeah. awesome, brilliant, yeah. absolutely fantastic record. And uh, so, oh, so there he is. He goes alongside Lovely. his great friend and teammate uh, Bobby Moore. There is there is Sir Jeff Hurst or Jeff Hurst as he was during his playing days, but he's absolutely. now Sir Jeff uh, to give him his full and proper title. Um, so that's fifty percent of your mountain side done, Russ. Um, yep. Where are you going for your third one, my friend? I think we see a theme here. It's got to be Martin Peters. Um, again, Martin, I've, I've met um, many, many times. I had met many, many times. Sadly, no longer with us um, on a golf course. I mean, it's to do a lot with okay. a variety club and things like that. And uh, it used to be funny because we used to sit down and have a chat afterwards, you know, because he was very quiet, very quiet man. Hmm. You know, Martin, he didn't have a lot to say. Um, you know, even even... When I was see him afterwards at the golf, very quiet, very, very again, very smart, and you know he was you know, a great guy for the game. And, and and in my eyes, in my eyes, he was he was one of the best, you know, insides uh, forwards that you could have. You know, he, he, he's again his reading of the game, the way he laid the ball off. You know, it, it was just doing a Bobby Moore just a bit further up the pitch. You know, and and obviously scored in the World Cup final as well. Um, but again, you know, this is these in that particular day, in that particular era, you know, these were fantastic footballers. They were, they were fantastic, and mine was well up there with um, with Jeff and, uh, and and Bobby Moore. Yeah, and and when he left in 1970 to go on to Pastures New, when he joined Tottenham Hotspur, yeah. he became the first two hundred thousand pound transfer fee in world football, which. Now seems you know that's, that's <laughs> weeks wages, weeks for wages yeah. yeah yeah it's crazy <laughs> but back then he he was yeah. the, the most expensive player in the world two hundred thousand pounds and and you do wonder if he was around now a player of that quality a player that could you know pass and shoot off of either foot was yeah. decent in the air yeah. all, all of the attributes that he had to bear and looking at his West Ham record just just looking here he got three hundred and sixty four appearances in all competitions one hundred goals so basically a goal every three and a half games if you please from set from midfield <coughs> that's that's an astonishing record that's fantastic. And yeah yeah and and alf ramsey said he was he you the, the often coined uh, quote from sir alf ramsey was that he was 10 years ahead of his time yep. and i just wonder what what would he be worth now in terms oh. of the transfer value it'd be frightening well, it would because in the day like you said when when the spurs come two hundred thousand pound footballer um you know, which again, I don't know what the wages were in them days, you know, but it weren't a lot in comparison today. Yeah. But he was at the top of the tree. That just goes to show how good he was. The most expensive footballer ever at that given time. You know, and you make him the most expensive footballer today. What, you know, it's just an open checkbook. You wouldn't have it, 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 it be impossible to put a price on him. Possible put a price. It was that good, you know, it's that good. I'll tell you what, and he wasn't a big man either. He wasn't a big guy. You know, no. like, like today's. You know, centre forwards and, and, and the inside right, inside left. That's what I always call them going the old fashioned way. Um, they're all big lads, you know. I mean, Declan's a big lad for a midfielder. Yeah. Um, you know, make twice of mine, Peters. But it, 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 but Peters could ghost past people, and, and he, was, he was just a fantastic footballer. Fantastic footballer. I think that was one of his his nicknames that he had back in the day, wasn't it? The ghost. Ghost, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because he just literally got a ball and just. <sighs> Just glided past, you know. It's fantastic, fantastic. The would be like, "Where's he popped up from?" Yeah. He's in the back of the net. <laughs> or where's he gone? <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So there we go. So, so yes, the, a bit of a theme there. It has to be said. We've got was, Bobby Moore, was. Jeff Hurst, Martin Peters. Um, but I can't argue with any of them, time. Russ. You, you were lucky enough to see those those three plays. I, I wish I could have done. But alas, it, it it was just one of those things. I wasn't around at the time, but you were, yeah. and you've got them bang, bang, bang in your row, um, in on your mountain. But yeah. there's one more space now. You've got yes. an awful lot of people you could choose from here, um, and, I, and I dare say that is there any honourable mentions before we before you do Call the big reveal off. of the fourth? Is there Goodness, any honourable mentions you want to put on? <laughs> 
Sir Trevor Brook in for a start. I mean, uh, again, a phenomenal footballer. Um, Frankie Lampard Sr. Yeah. Harry Redknapp. I mean, these are guys that I'm watching in the day, you know. Uh, you, th these boys were, were terrific in the team as well, you know. They were, and, but great characters. Mm. I think we're losing a little bit in the character side of things today. Whether that's money to do with that or what, I don't know. But we tend to lose the characters, which these boys were, you know. And um, as I say, you know, when you look at people like that, um, yeah, I, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you a lad that I always liked. And that was mm. Julian Dix, to be honest yeah. with you, right? I mean, hard as nails. Um, but he wore, he wore, you know, the, the, he wore the cross hammers on his, on his, on his, on his, on his sleeve. You know yeah. what I mean? He was, he was all for it. Joe Cole when he was there. You know, these boys that have come through like that, they, they great, great lads that, you know, have done really, really well. I, I believe, I believe our academy, uh, the West Ham Academy, has produced more England internationals than any other football academy. Have, uh, check it out. Apparently. You know, they've come, it they've come through the West Ham Academy. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, yeah. so you know, there's some there's some great lads that have, that have played for the club and been through the club. That uh, certainly, certainly those lads. Alan Devonshire, another legend. one. Devonshire, yeah, of course. Cotty, Fantastic. another one. You know, another, you, another, another he was little. my first footballing hero, Tony Cotty. Was um, he? Yeah. Oh yeah, I was I was there. My first game at Upton Park. Uh, 25th of October, 1983. Milk Cup, second round, second leg. West Ham United, 10. Berry, nil. Yep. Uh, record ever victory. That was my first game. And Tony Cotty wow. got four goals that night. Brilliant. Brilliant. There you go. Brilliant. A little bit of, little bit of personal football history. Lovely, but isn't it, so, th so there's your, your honourable mentions, mm. Russ, and, and there's a few, fair few of them, Yeah. Uh, which probably, if people have been paying attention to the names that you've mentioned, you could probably work out who the who the one that's <laughs> going to go along the World Cup trio is concerned. Who is it? Yeah, Billy Bonds. Got to be. Yeah, got to be. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the, the guy is a legend at the club, uh, a wonderful footballer. Again, wore his heart on his sleeve, you know what I mean? He was, uh, um, and a brilliant captain. Oh, a great yeah. captain, you know, it's, it's the same as Bobby was, but Bobby Moore was. But, you know, it, it was um, Billy Bonds to watch him play and, you know, get stuck in. And uh, it, was, it was terrific. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. And this, he was a player that came to us from Charlton Athletic. Um, he's a, obviously, he was from Plumstead originally, Woolwich Plumstead sort of area. So he's a South London boy. But yep. he came in 1967. And just looking here in all competitions, listen to this, 799 appearances. Oh, one away <laughs> from breaking 800. <laughs> uh, Heartbreak, right? but that 61 something. goals. Yeah, he was never a prolific scorer, but uh, you no. know, by God, did he stop some, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was signed as a right back originally. Yeah. And then he transitioned into central midfield and him and Trevor Brooking were sort of like – the the sort of like the dynamic duo at the center of the park and then as he got older he then transitioned and he moved back to center half and his longtime partner partner in the atfa cup final was alvin martin another yeah. great Fantastic. servant to the club so, um uh, he obviously later went on to become a, a coach and then obviously ultimately the the first team manager as well but he, yeah. he had a fantastic career in claret and blue whilst he was playing and two-time FA Cup winning captain. I don't know, are you aware of the story about ha the circumstances of how he became the captain, Russ? No, no. The story that I've heard, yeah. and in fact, I, I remember seeing it, It was it, this actually came from the mouth of the late Ron Greenwood. And basically, it was originally, when Bobby Moore left the club, it was originally going to be Frank Lampard Sr. that was going to be the captain. Right. But yeah, apparently, yeah. he'd articulated to Ron Greenwood that he was thinking about possibly moving on pastures new at that point. So, Ron Greenwood made the decision to say, OK, if, if Frank's possibly thinking of moving on, which he didn't, yeah, but he was yeah. thinking about it. He thought, well, then I'll make Billy Bonds captain. And it's, it's one of those sliding yeah, doors. Well, if, wow. if Frank Lampard Sr. had kept his mouth shut, yep. he'd have been the, 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 the captain of West Ham and Billy Bonds wouldn't have had that opportunity. So oh, it's, yeah. it's funny how things work out. And it just, and it just. Fate is it, it's it, right place, right time. And, you know, circumstances of, of where you're at and what you're doing, you know, it's, uh, I could relate to it.
Absolutely. Well, that's that's not a bad qu uh, quartet that it has to be said, Mr. Bray. I've got to say, you know, Thank you've got you. a World Cup winning captain as well as yeah. winning the FA Cup and the European Cup Winners' Cup for us as well. You've yep. got a guy that got a hat trick in a World Cup final and, and one of our top goal scorers. Martin Peters, again, a fantastic player in his own right. Again, a pl another player who scored in a World Cup final. And then obviously Billy Bonds, two time. FA Cup winner himself and multiple yep. time hammer of the year and our all time appearance record holder. And then obviously later went on to become our manager and now has a stand named after him at London Stadium, does. which he is does. richly deserved. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to now peel back the curtain and I am going to reveal this is what is the fruits of Russ's hard labor has given you. Look at that. Look at yeah. that. That is absolute. Russ, I'll tell you what, it, if and when you give up the old um, PDC refereeing sort of gig, yeah. I'll tell you what, yeah. if, if ever you want to sort of go into stonemasonry, I, I think you're on a winner there, mate. <laughs> I think That's I'm beautiful. on one. You're going to struggle to get a better, you're going to struggle to get a better rush more than that. That is, that is superb. Absolutely brilliant. Well, Russ, I'd, I'd like to thank you very sincerely for your giving up your time on, on a Friday evening to, to join in with the uh, the ongoing series of uh, Mount Matty Rushmore. My absolute pleasure. Thanks for asking us on, Rob. I really appreciate it. No, no, we. Uh, I appreciate having you on, mate. It really is my, my genuine pleasure. And ladies and gentlemen at home, please don't forget to like, comment on and share the stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and hit that bell icon for alerts on new content. As always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. And we're just going to say thank you very much for watching. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. <laughs> Your microphone, Russ. <laughs> Rob, do you know what? I do not believe it. Honestly, I've got all my microphones set up. I've got the whole shebang, the speakers, everything. I've got a big job on tomorrow with Keith Della. And bloody Zippy's only gone and nicked me microphone. What's that all about? For Christ's sake, you know, come on. We're trying to earn a living here. And you've got that silly sod running around doing all sorts. Hey, ain't on. Ain't on.